What was it like growing up in your family? Well, I grew up in Collingwood. Mm. That was uh, the first decade of my life and I loved that. I loved it. I just didn't think you could peak more than Collingwood. Yeah. <laughs> I know, it sounds weird. It was very working class and it was very multicultural, but to me it was like, you know, subconsciously, I felt like it was a whole world and it was, you know, it was a really great cross-section of the world in one area and, yeah. um, and where we lived was like a village. We knew so many people that lived close by, so you could just go by foot everywhere. Yeah. And um, I loved it and I felt relevant and I felt part of something important and everyone was at a similar place in their lives, like everyone was at the sort of same financial right. sort of place of getting on their feet and setting themselves up. Um, and then we moved out of Collingwood and went to Doncaster, which was very white and middle class. Right. And I was like a human piece of salami that turned <laughs> up at a white bread convention. You know, like it was just, I then no matter what I did, I could not blend in. I could really? not make friends for the longest time. And it was a real punish. And so then, that was when you were 10? That was when I was, yeah, 9 and 10. Yeah, yeah, right. And I used to beg my parents so that I could go back to my, my uh, original school where I was sort of, you know, a, able to jump grades and do things like that. And I went in at a whole other intellectual level, you know, like academically, I went from being a straight A student to a, you know, C and D. Really? And so it was multiple shocks. It was uh, shocking socially, it was shocking academically, it was socially, um, you know, we were, we were, in my book I call it, you know, um, painted in neon and dipped in garlic. There yeah, was just no right. way I could blend in. Right, and did you experience much racism? Yeah, really? I did, and a lot of bullying. But um, somehow, you know, somehow I was able to keep trying to be inventive about how I was gonna sort of finally get them to yeah, cave. Right. And so I was very entrepreneurial, you know, like I, uh, I thought, okay, well, what can I bring to the marketplace that was going to buy yeah. me some popularity. And so it's I, all about that as a yeah. kid, isn't it? I uh, brought the cigarettes, Yeah. <laughs> you know. I was never a big smoker and I st I'm still not. I was always like, oh yeah, what do you mean I've got to keep doing <laughs> yeah. this? And this is another responsibility I'm not prepared to take. But I introduced smoking to, to my Did peers really? at the time. Down at the creek. How old? Oh, you know, I think at this point I was, it was a desperate time. I think it might have been 11. Shit. And I would uh, steal them off relatives or my dad and then get a little bit of a stash and then say to the kids, you know, let's go down to the creek. And that was my, you know, the, I, I sort of seemed like very urban and, and very pioneering to them. Yeah. Then, of course, I didn't take it up and I wouldn't be surprised if they're all still smoking. Yeah, but, right. You, you know, got them all addicted, but you became popular and that slowly, is Slowly, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I tried to bring my sort of more inner city ideas to the outer suburbs. It can be so vicious, yeah. primary school and high school. Yeah. And because all you do want to do is fit in, which now that's kind of almost the last thing you want to do. To an extent you exactly. want to, but being individual, yeah. you know, we embrace that. But yeah. back then you just want to fit in. So being a young Greek girl around all, you know, you would just, you totally would stand out like yeah. neon sprinkling Everything. garlic. Everything. Everything. Yeah. The, the way we spoke, the way I dressed, because I was very into fashion. Right. I mean, you know, they were such straight um, girls. There was lace and there was, you know, long socks and there was, you know, they yeah, were girly right. girls. And I turned up with, you know, a Susie Quattro haircut and a Connie. I don't know whether you knew what they were. Oh. They were very hip during that era. They were, Magda plays a character that used to wear them on Fast Forward. They were a two-tone little tiny cardigan with a tiny little belt at the back. And Sharpies wore them. Oh, okay. And Sharpies uh, is like a Melbourne, like, yeah. they it's were like, a gang kind of. They, they? Well, it's like a, a sort of more palatable version of a skinhead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, I had two of those. I had one that was cream and brown and another with light blue and uh, dark blue Beautiful. trim. Beautiful. And I, we wore treads. Do you know what treads no. are? Treads were literally the soles of these oh, shoes. Oh yeah, they, they go like that. They were from tyre treads. And they were another ugly thing, but if you had them, you were, you were sort cool. of bona fide. And it's like for my school, it was Doc Martens yeah. or Blunstons. Well then, yeah, That's showing the that yeah. you're of a different generation. <laughs> Keep going. Okay, and so that was, you know, I brought all that sort of stuff there, not thinking that I was gonna break ground. This is how we dressed yeah. in Collingwood. And there it was considered, bad taste and I suppose a bit butch. 
Yeah, right. And, um, you know, I used to love my high-waisted staggers jeans and, you know, like I would have a tantrum if I didn't get the latest and the greatest. Yeah. Uh, which sort of worked against me in, in that environment. 